Hi, I'm Benoit. I'm the author of Arduino JSON, and in this video, I will show you what is new in Arduino JSON version 6.0. This is a major revision of the library. There are some new features, some cool features, but unfortunately, there are some breaking changes, and you will have to update existing code to work with the new API. Let's see what is new. So first we have the support for message pack. Uh, we can both serialize and deserialize message pack with Arduino JSON 6. There is no an error code that tells why the deserialization failed. I know this has been a pain for a lot of you. And uh, there are support now for uh, non-zero terminated inputs. The first big change concerns JSON buffer. With Arduino JSON 5, it was very difficult to use a JSON object or a JSON array as a class member because you had to make sure that the JSON buffer stayed in memory too. The trick was to use a class member to store the JSON buffer, but then it, it was too complicated for a simple task. In Arduino JSON 6, we replaced the concept of JSON buffer with a concept of JSON document. The JSON document owns, owns the memory and contains the root of the object tree. You can see the JSON object as a combination of JSON buffer and JSON variant. In Arduino JSON 5, you have two kinds of JSON buffer, the static JSON buffer, which lives in the stack, or the dynamic JSON buffer that lives on the heap. Now this was on with version 5. With version 6, you have the static JSON document, same as before, you need to specify the size, and the dynamic JSON document. Now, since a document can hold any kind of value, you need to cast it before uh, reading what it, what's inside. For example, uh, let's say if you have uh, um, a JSON object, you need you need if you want to extract to extract let's say a JSON object, you need to cast the document. I'm sorry, root import as JSON object. Now, you can reuse the document and put something else into it. So, if you want to uh, convert the document into an array, for instance, you need to call um, not as, but to JSON array. So, this clears the array, clears the content of the document and set it to an array. And now you can play and add values to the array as usual. Like this. Let's see how to deserialize JSON now. So with Arduino JSON 5 you need to use a JSON buffer and to call path object and give it the input. And this used to return a reference to a JSON object. Now in Arduino JSON 6, um, so you have a document and you call deserialize JSON, specify the document and uh, the input. Every time you call uh, deserialize, it clears the document. I mean, it releases the memory 
and uh, parses the input. So it means you are allowed to call this ILI several times and it will erase the document every time. Now let's see how to check if the parsing was successful or not. So in Arduino JSON 5 you have to check the value of root of JSON object that success and from there there was very little you can do to know what happened. In Arduino JSON 6 deserialize JSON return an object of type deserialization error most of the time you will use auto and then you can check if there was an error and print what kind of error it was so that that's one way or you could compare to the predefined values like uh, no memory or the few others like this or invalid input I will let you discover this in the in the doc. In Arduino JSON 5, when you wanted to serialize a JSON object, you had to call print2 and give the output, the destination, or uh, call pretty pretty print 2 yeah. now with Arduino JSON 6 you have to call the function serialize JSON and specify the object or the document as you want and the destination if you want a pretty JSON a pretty file JSON document it's serialize JSON pretty and same as before the destination. In Arduino JSON 5 it was not absolutely mandatory to have a zero terminated input because the parser was clever enough to detect the last character of the input but if the input is corrupted and if there is no null at the end of the input you have a risk of a buffer overrun. Unfortunately in Arduino JSON 5 it, it was not possible to specify the input size uh, to parse object for the simple reason that this parameter is the nesting limit which by default is, is 10 on Arduino. So I changed this in Arduino JSON 6 and now you can specify the input size which is uh, much more secure. If you do want to change the nesting limit you have to do this on the document now. Nesting limit. So the default is still 10. If you need more that's for example 20. Now let's talk about the biggest feature which is the support for message pack. As you may already know message pack is a uh, binary version of, uh, of JSON and it produces uh, a bit more compact documents uh, and these documents are simpler to deserialize and serialize. So Arduino JSON 6 supports almost every features in the message pack specification uh, so boolean, nils, integer, float, etc. with the exception of the binary format and the type timestamp extension. I hope I will be able to add both in a future revision of the library. So let's see how we can use that. I already showed you how to serialize a JSON document with of course Arduino JSON 6. So you, sp you give the document and you specify the, the output. Well, it, it's almost the same for uh, message pack. You just have to replace serialize JSON with serialize message pack. Okay, if you want to deserialize 
a JSON document, you remember you just pass the document and the input and it's almost the same for message pack, you just use this IALIZE message pack instead and it returns the same type of uh, error, uh, error code which is this IALIZATION ERROR but most likely you will use AUTO As usual, the library has been tested intensively, including the message pack serialization. So it could be production ready with the exception that I think uh, I will introduce new breaking changes in the in the future version, in the, in the next revision. So that's why I use the beta suffix. The, the beta flag for this uh, this particular version but uh, it doesn't mean it's buggy it's, it just means I think I will change the API one more time and um, and that's all uh, don't worry it will be simple changes this not, not as big as this one uh, next thing I I want to ask you please to write to me if you have some question or suggestion or problems with the new version. Um, you can contact me via the GitHub issues, that's the preferred way. Um, and I hope this video hasn't been too boring after all. Happy coding!